Pharrell Williams stütze der Neptunes und geniale amerikanischer Produzent von Kelly, No Doubt, Zink, Janet Jackson und vielen anderen. Direkt aus dem Studio ist er heute mit seiner Gruppe hierher gekommen, um uns sein erstes Album vorzustellen. Nerd. Nerd oder No One Ever Really Dies. Eine überraschende und energiegeladene Mischung aus Hip-Hop, Rock und R&B. Hip-Hop, Rock, R&B. We might know you as the Neptunes, very, very famous, uh, renowned producers. Uh, but how did you guys meet? Was it at school? We met, we met in school. Pharrell and Chad played in band together. And me and Pharrell, ironically, went to the same high school. So, like, back then, it was a lot of, a lot of groups that we, we, we enjoyed, that we had in common, that brought us together as a, as a band. A lot of your influences, when I was reading your bio on your website, it's like mm -hmm. uh, there's so many influences that you might not, might not expect. People like Queen, Tears for Fears, America, Lynn Skinner, people like that. Are those are the guys who influenced you in the beginning to get into music? No, I was, I mean, they played a part, but it was a lot of influences like Steely Dan, Stevie Wonder, Donny Hathaway, Minnie Rippleton, the list goes on. Why this decision to... Um, Stop being the producers for somebody else and do it for yourselves. Why, why did the Neptune suddenly become nerd? We haven't stopped producing. On my bus, I still have a studio. I still, I still produce. It's just we decided to do something just different. Actually, Keith Wood from, from Virgin came up with the brilliant idea of us doing a record since I had featured on so many records that I produced as well. So he's like, do we want to do a record? I was like, sure. You know, we'll just tell... We'll tell it from our perspective of just growing up in high school because those, like, those are like the wonder years for us. The album and most of our albums will always have uh, a high school-based mentality when, when, when you listen to it. You have your own label too, Star Trek Entertainment. What are you planning on doing with that? We have, uh, we have a group called Clips. It's the first act we're releasing on that label. Um, they got a new single called Grind, and the album will be out on August 20th. Um, we're working on Khaleesi's album. The name of it is called Amphibious. We're working on uh, this kid, Roscoe P. Cold Chain. This kid that sounds like Samuel Jackson out of Philadelphia. Uh, a band called Spy Mob from Minneapolis. Yep. A cross between like a Todd Rundgren meets uh, Steely Dan. And then there's a, a group called Toke. And then there's a rapper named Family. Like, we got a lot of, you know, a, a lot of nice things coming out this year. Yeah, you sound so, like you're very busy. Yeah, just be mindful that, like, Star Trek is on its way. You feel that your music can also change the world or at least change some people's world. Is that true? Totally. Well, why do you think that music can change the world? Because I often think that when people come to concerts, you're already preaching to the people who love you. How can it then go off and change the world? I mean, I believe it, but I just want to hear what you guys think. I mean, music is a universal language. You know, even though um, lyrically sometimes it may be in a language that a whole other country is not familiar with or, or not really well versed in, it doesn't matter because the music speaks to people itself and the melody connects to people's subconsciousness. So it's like, with us, we just try to make good music that uh, vibrates the planet. It's nothing that deep. It's just, just us having fun. It's not really that, like, um, deep in the psyche. Like, the music is not, you know, we don't overthink things. We just try to make good music. 